The moving panorama of Pilgrim's Progress, also known as Bunyan's Tableau, is a rare and remarkable work of art in the collection of the Saco Museum in Saco, Maine. Moving panoramas were an international phenomenon in the mid-19th century. Combining painting with performance, moving panoramas consisted of a series of large scenes painted onto a long sheet of fabric. Using a system of rotating spools, moving panoramas were theatrically presented to audiences by scrolling the fabric from one spool to another, accompanied by a lecture and music. This gave the illusion that the painted scenes were actually progressing before the audience's eyes, creating a shared visual experience that anticipated modern cinema by more than 50 years. Fewer than 15 moving panoramas exist today, and none of the others are as complete, as large, or as impressive as the Sacco Museum's moving panorama of Pilgrim's Progress. The panorama was conceived in 1848 by the American artists Edward Harrison May and Joseph Kyle, both of whom were members of the National Academy of Design in New York, an art school and membership organization for professional artists. The panorama was meant to be an entrepreneurial project. They planned for it to travel the country, sell thousands of tickets, and make a lot of money. So May and Kyle did everything they could to choose a subject and a design that would be popular with contemporary audiences. The Pilgrim's Progress, first published in 1678 by the Reformation-era preacher John Bunyan, was a compelling and logical choice. Long before the phrase bestseller had become part of our language, the book was a runaway bestseller and remained so well into the 19th century. In simple, often powerful and affecting English, the book allegorically describes the trials, temptations, and triumphs of a man named Christian on his journey to the celestial city and eternal life. Part two, published in 1684, recounts the similar journey of Christiana, his wife. In making their plans for the panorama, May and Kyle knew that nearly every American home with any books at all had a copy of The Pilgrim's Progress, they knew that their potential audience was already familiar with the exciting and sometimes violent adventures of the story. So they assumed correctly that an eight foot high, 850 foot long panorama of the Pilgrim's Progress, life-sized and in color as the promotional brochures boasted, would bring in the crowds. They had a treasure trove of images to draw upon in designing their panorama. Since the book's original publication in 1678, Printed copies of The Pilgrim's Progress had featured lively black and white illustrations of many of the major events in the story. Many of those scenes had been reworked as easel paintings in the earlier 1840s by some of May and Kyle's friends at the National Academy, and so they persuaded those same friends to design scenes for the panorama based upon their paintings. In the end, a number of America's most famous painters and illustrators, then only rising stars, contributed designs for the panorama. Frederick Edwin Church, Jasper Cropsey, Daniel Huntington, Felix Octavius Darley, and others. The painters of the panorama took the designs from these senior artists and recreated them with bold colors and brushstrokes on fabric. The panorama of Pilgrim's Progress made its debut in 1850 in New York's Washington Hall, where it played to full houses for six months straight, a remarkable run when most panorama exhibitions lasted only a few weeks. Nearly 200,000 people, a third of the city's population at the time, paid 50 cents each for admission to performances of the panorama, making its creators a tidy sum. Because the panorama was so popular and such a huge financial success, Kyle and May decided to create a second version that could travel the country at the same time as the first, allowing them to cover more ground and make even more money. Before the actual brushwork began, May left for Paris and the artist Jacob Dallas assisted Kyle in painting the revised panorama. After adding some new scenes, omitting some old ones, and correcting some imperfections from the first version, Kyle and Dallas debuted the second version of the panorama in New York in 1851. This is the panorama that exists in the Sacco Museum today. But how did the panorama end up in Sacco, Maine? Well, as the 19th century wore on, magic lantern shows and other novelties made possible by the invention of photography became more popular than panoramas, 
which soon came to be seen as an outdated fad. The first version of the panorama of Pilgrim's Progress, the one that debuted in 1850, was forgotten and either lost or destroyed. As for the second version, after a tour of York County, Maine in 1864, it did not find another booking, and so it remained on view in a barn in Biddeford, just over the river from Saco. After passing through the hands of former industrialist, Biddeford mayor, theatrical agent, and theater owner Charles A. Shaw, it eventually came into the possession of a local real estate agent named Luther Bryant. Two years after Bryant's death in 1894, his descendants gave it to the York Institute Museum in Saco, which has become today's Saco Museum. The York Institute exhibited the panorama in 1897, one year after the gift, and then, as hard as it is to imagine losing track of 850 feet of fabric, that's exactly what happened. The panorama was rediscovered in the museum's storage vault in 1996, nearly 100 years since it had last been seen. And since then, there has been a steady campaign to restore it to its former glory and find a way to present it to modern audiences. Now, through the efforts of many, that moment has come.